Hey everybody, Davy Lemon here. I'm just bringing some good news for this holiday season, a holiday week. Um, we have done a Groove Pages update recently, and I just wanted to mention some of the things that were added, improved, and fixed. So let's just start with the things that were added. Let's jump into Groove and let me show you. So here we are in Groove Pages, and one of the things that uh, was added is pretty cool. And that is for pop-ups. Whenever you have pop-ups, you can now decide how the actual pop-up appears or disappears, which means that you can now go into the settings of a pop-up and you can um, you can set up the animation for appearing and the leaving. So the how it shows to the customer how it leaves. Let me just select something like uh, bounce and bounce out, and let's just save this one over here. Click save and I'm going to hook this up with the button I have here on the page. So configure the button to open a pop-up, which is going to be the pop-up one and then update. Once that is done, we can go over here to publish. All right, it's published now. So let's just check it out. So we are here. I'm just going to reload one more time. And when we click this, it actually jumps. As you saw, it bounced, and if we if we do this, then it kind of zooms in and out and it bounces off. So that's the pop-up animations for the appearance and and how it how it leaves the actual site, which is not super important, but it kind of gives you a more lively effect to your site. Moving on to the next thing, it it is a feature that was very very often requested by you guys and that's the sitemaps and robots txt so let me go in and show you what it is actually so for robots txt there is only one thing that you can manage and that is in the site uh, site settings over here you can say exclude robots txt file in case you don't want to have robots crawl your site uh, or you don't want to create this file you can turn this on Please notice remo removing robots.txt file can advert adversely affect your SEO. All right. So this, if you turn off or if you turn on, that means that it's not going to include that robots.txt. Otherwise, in case you don't touch it, it's going to be automatically generated for you. So let me just show you how it looks like. Whenever you have a published site, it automatically creates a sitemap. In order to see it, you just write it inside your ad address bar. Let me just zoom in so you can see over here. So I'm going to type in forward slash sitemap dot XML. Okay, so you just add on this part forward slash sitemap dot XML to the actual uh, root of your site. And this is going to open up the sitemap XML file which means that it's automatically generated whenever you publish out uh, your page. So let's just create a new page over here. I'm going to add, for example, this, uh, this page template, and we're going to name this, I don't know, um, I don't know, app demo, and I'm going to call, call this app dash demo check mark and then publish it out so now I don't only have uh, one page after the publishing we'll reload this XML sitemap and we'll see how it looks like so now when I reload this there should be another asset over here which is for the for the second page so there you go you saw that it automatically creates the different links whenever you are publishing something it kind of updates the site so you don't have to manually do that so this is the sitemap. In case you want, you can also go and find the robots.txt file just by typing in forward slash robots.txt. Right? And that's also going to give you um, um, an ugly page, which actually means that the robots are allowed to crawl the site. So that's basically it. That's the big feature that we wanted to uh, provide you and now when you go into any kind of search console from Google or Bing or other platforms you can now provide them the sitemap link and the robots.txt file just go in over here copy your link to the clipboard come over here and add in the forward slash uh, sitemap.xml 
or robots.txt and that's going to be your link that you can provide to those search consoles. This is not everything that we are going to do. There will be another option over here, which is, because, which is going to be the SEO menu. The SEO menu will have a copy sitemap link and copy robots.txt link. We didn't want to include it anywhere here on the page because, of, because this is a really a SEO functionality. So once we have our SEO menu, then we're going to provide that copy paste option for the link. All right, moving on to the next feature that was added, and that is an ability to show and hide blocks at the end of the countdown timer. So let me just show you how that looks like. We're going to bring in a countdown timer over here. And I'm going to show you the option. When you select the countdown timer, you can have a, a designed one or a, or a blank one like I have here. Um, when you go over to what to do in certain cases, each and every one of the actions will have show or hide blocks. So you can now see that on this side we have multiple blocks. So there is a first block over here, second block uh, over here, third block, fourth block and so on. If you want you can also go in, click on the block and name them. Okay, okay, sorry, just click on the pencil icon. All right, and now you have named your block. So what you could do is go into the countdown timer and set up show hide blocks and which blocks to hide when the countdown timer reaches zero. You can hide, for example, the white section that we named or you can hide the first one, second one, third one. All right, so this is when the countdown timer reaches zero, then hide these blocks. You could also create blocks that will be shown only when the countdown timer reaches zero. For example, at the end of the at the end of this page, you could create a, a block that will say, uh, "This promotion has ended. Please uh, sign up for our newsletter to 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 learn about when the offer is is available again." You could set this up uh, also, and then make sure that the that the blocks everything to hide but only show that specific block that you created for that purpose which is very powerful it's a really a, a direct marketing feature and those of you that are running funnels with countdown timers may have um, thought about this functionality um, and how to use it now it's possible moving on to the improvements there's a, a couple of improvements that, that we added which means that the existing functionalities got some new um, new features so option to make parent links unclickable in a navigation menu if you have any kind of site with a navigation menu um, I'm just going to add it over here to the to this site okay navigation bar let's just take this blue one All right, so here we have a navigation menu. In case you're using um, a feature that uh, was launched recently for the mega menu or something like that, you may not want these options to be clickable. And now you actually have that option. So in case you have a drop down or you have a mega menu on these options, then you can turn, the, the, turn these options off from being clickable so that they will only act as a menu item to have more more options shown. But it's not going to actually be a, a page that will open up once clicked. So this little toggle switch, make parent links unclickable, will allow you to have a mega menu, but the, the, the top one, the parent option, will not be clickable, All right? Which is pretty easy to set up with one click. The next thing is the color publishing indicators. When you go over here to pages, now you see there are uh, orange dots over here. There's also when you create a new page, there are different dots. So there is now a red dot on this page over here. But what happens if I just publish this page alone and no other pages, right? So let me just reload so that we actually get the, get the options to to publish a page separately all right we actually have them here so we have three different page indicators one is for published the yellow is for unpublished changes that means that 
there is some changes that were done but the pi the page was not published yet and then there is uh, the red indicator is when a page has not been published at all before so now you can uh, hover over these options and see what they do it's pretty good indicator on how to use these pages all right uh, if you were using the groove mail element before you were not able to set up any kind of um, indicators or validation messages so let's just set one up very quickly if we come over here and you set up an email and add validation rules for email and cannot be empty oops I just didn't save it all right and also the first name for example add validation rules cannot be empty those validation rules didn't really work with the groove mail form now when we publish this out it will work it will say uh, the error message on what needs to be done in order to kind of fulfill the um, the rules of the of the form so let's just say that I didn't put anything here it says a validation message that this field is required because it was set up like that also this field is required as well if we do something like that this field requires a valid email address so this is going to help you and your customers or visitors to your site to actually fill in the proper information and fill in the required fields moving on we have some corrections to the mega menu I was uh, talking a bit about the mega menus in the last update video but in case you would like uh, to create a mega menu now it's a little bit more easier it, it, we made a, the whole process a little bit more straightforward previously we had a bunch of options here on this sidebar uh, for deactivating the different uh, screens so the mega menu and different screens now this is uh, managed just by clicking on the different mega menu options so in case you click on the device that means that you deactivated the mega menu from showing on those specific devices so in case you create a mega menu now you can manage it very easily with this um, with this option on where to show and where not to show you can also show this or turn this on and then it's going to deactivate it on all screens and doesn't make really sense but you can uh, and we also added an option to decide the width of the mega menu so here you can set up a full width mega menu or a static width you can decide how wide the mega menu you would like to have and also if the mega menu will show as a drop down towards the right or it will show as a drop down towards the left in certain cases when you have a menu item towards the far end of your site you don't want it to actually show to the right you would probably want it to show to the left and this is now something that you can decide where to kind of uh, show the mega menu towards the left or the right side and we also have a new improved option for for hyperlinking text whenever you are hyperlinking text selecting a text and clicking the hyperlink option we now have an, a toggle switch for opening it in a new tab previously there was two buttons which external link or internal link which is kind of confusing and now just a new tab toggle switch is going to make uh, make a difference because you'll be able to set up hyperlinks to open in the new tab all right so these were the improvements i'm now going to go over the fixes um, there's a bunch of them i'm not going to go in in depth uh, of the uh, issues but just so that you are aware we had an issue with cloning funnel folders the, f uh, the actual funnel folder was being cloned but uh, with empty pages inside so now when you have a funnel that you that you import let's just set up for example this one and all of the pages get created you won't have an issue with cloning it uh, anymore that has been solved so now we have the funnel folder if we come over here to clone it's going to create a cloned folder over here with the pages in there so let's just wait a little bit all right so here we go I just had to pause for a moment it, it took a little bit of time because it didn't import all of the pages pr uh, previously so now when you clone the actual pay actual funnel folder it, it brings in all the pages with the page content being on there so that has been fixed sub menu and menu items not clickable in navigation on uh, mobile and desktop devices we had a strange issue where the actual menu on the top was not clickable 
now this is not happening anymore it was uh, also causing issues on mobile devices where you clicked on a navigation element and it just didn't open the site that was fixed issue with removing a link from the container when you linked in a container for example this one over here um, you linked it to something you wouldn't you, you weren't able to actually remove that link. Now that is possible just by re, just by deleting the link. Hover settings getting apply uh, getting lost when cloning elements, saving a block or a template. So whenever you set up a hover setting like this, and when you clone the element, the hover settings were not getting cloned. It just stayed blank. Uh, basically, there were no hover settings on the cloned element. Only the the main um, state was showing without the hover settings as you can see right now it's showing uh, body styling causes the sizing drag handles not to show up when we added the option to style the body section of the of the page uh, when we when we set up so that you can change the background of the whole site and then add on transparent blocks and make kind of a cool uh, looking site this actually uh, turned off the the options for the drag for the drag handles uh, for some reason we now have fixed that and it's it's back mega menus are showing in the pages drop down so the mega menus were showing over here in this pages drop down whenever you created a mega menu for some reason they were just showing over here with a blank section so it, it didn't have a name it was just showing it wanted, it wanted to be a part of this pages drop down we have fixed that we uh, we made sure that it doesn't show anymore so the mega menus will only show in in certain cases with a little v or a down arrow on the pages where you actually activated them on rem and pixel uh, rem to pixel in style editor with some of the legacy blocks and legacy uh, templates meaning older templates and older blocks that were created before the shift to pixels we uh, we built with a system called REM. That's basically a sizing sizing me uh, measure for different elements on your canvas. So in those templates and in those uh, blocks, the REM was still showing whenever you clicked on something. Now we did uh, automatic conversions of these REMs. So whenever you have something like uh, a spacing, for example, it actually now converts automatically the rem measures into pixels and you don't have to kind of guess on okay 1.5 rem is now what so that's an automatic conversion because of these legacy blocks and legacy pages and we also had an issue with the primary navigation option missing in the clone to section so whenever you were here for example and you wanted to clone something oops wrong button so whenever you wanted to clone or move to uh, this site the primary navigation was missing so you couldn't really clone a page to the primary navigation which is now back and it's it's showing it over here in this in this drop down and also we managed uh, the css a little bit on each and every pages on this css section there was a bunch of code added on every time and now we managed so that you can put in your custom CSS so that not all of the CSS from the page is showing, but only the custom CSS that you add on extra on top is being shown. So this is a this is a not a huge improvement and not a huge fix, but it's just something that I will make uh, those users' lives simpler that are using this custom CSS box. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is everything for uh, these Groove Pages updates. Hopefully, you enjoy them. Hopefully, this is something you were waiting for. If you do have any questions, please feel free to ask us in the comments below and in our support, support.groovedigital.com. We would be able to help you there. So, until the next time, thank you very much. See you.